Welcome everybody, I hope you are having a great day. In this episode, we are going to take a look at some design patterns we can apply to models. And first of all, I want to take a look at how it really works when we query something from the database. So I'm now in my command line and we want to enter in the shell. So type in manage.py shell. And this is basically just a place where we can test out some things, you know, access some database models and so on. So first of all, I want to import the book model from the main app. So from main.models, import book. Next up, I want to import the daytime. You will see why in a minute. So from daytime, import daytime. And then we can create a book instance using book.objects.create. And then I'm going to specify a title and call it a new book. And then a word count of 70,000. Then I'm going to set the published on to datetime.now, which is why we had to import datetime first. And then, yeah, that's it. And you can see that we created a new book. We get a little error because we used datetime instead of time zone, but that will be fine. So let's just hit the up arrow to create another book. And this one is going to be called A Nice Adventure. And then I'm going to create another book and name it Obscurity. Why not? So now we can type in book.objects.all and you will see that we get all of the books. So we now can start demystifying how this actually works. And whenever we type in book.objects.all, we are basically dissecting our query into three parts. The first part is obviously the book, which is the model name. The second part is the objects, which is the so-called model manager name. And the third part is just all, which is the function we are calling. And you see, by the way, that I set up this little function just so you can see the names of the books. So add that in. And now that we know how this behaves, we can actually customize our behavior by creating a custom book model manager. So go into your file and start out by typing in class, book manager, and this one subclass is models.manager. And next up we can specify any function we want. So let's say I want to create a function called um, starts with a, and obviously taking in the self. Now we can return the super class and there is a method called dot get query set and this basically just returns every single one of the book models we have in the database and then we can call dot filter and I'm going to filter the title and of course I named this function starts with a so we want to get every single title which starts with a and then I'm going to use i starts with and equal to a and then a space and this i basically just indicates that I don't want to pay attention to capitalization so I'm going to take an, an uppercase a or lowercase a doesn't matter so we can save it and then we can go back to our class book and of course we discussed that there is a book manager already attached to this class so behind the scenes, what actually is happening is that Django adds an object and sets that equal to models.manager. And now we can either override the objects or we can create a new one. I'm just going to create a new one and call it books. And we can now set it equal to our newly made book manager. So going back to our shell. And now we can just quit out for a moment and then enter in again so from main dot models import the book and now we can actually try it out by using book dot and then obviously the model manager name which is books like we specified here and then dot starts with a and you will see that we get two titles. One is A New Book and A Nice Adventure, which both obviously start with A. And you will still be able to call book.books.all 
just because we are inheriting from the superclass and this one has the method attached to it already, so that's still behavior that is accessible to you. And I would consider using a model manager whenever you are repeating a single query multiple times throughout your entire project, then it might be a good idea to encapsulate it into this you know, model manager so you can reuse the behavior multiple times. And that's just a very good idea to keep your code as dry as possible. Okay, now imagine that during development we want to create a second model which is called post. So let's go ahead and do this. Class post, model stop model, and a normal post has a title, models of Shuffield, max length, set that to 200, and not the word count, but I'm going to take the published and modified, and then a body, and set that equal to models dot text field. Now in this case, it wouldn't be too bad to leave it at what it is, but you can see that we still repeat ourselves by specifying the same field names multiple times. For example, we have a title right here and one right here. Then we have the published on and modified, obviously copied from there. And we can get rid of them by, or get rid of the duplicate behavior by using a model mixin. And it's basically just a class we can subclass from both our models, which then in turn, you know, adds the fields to the model itself. So go to the top and create a new class called postable and this one subclass from models dot model and now we can create all of our fields which are duplicate so title and then the publish on and modified and we can delete them from here And last, we need to set the meta class. And inside of the meta class, we need to set an attribute called abstract to true. So that defines it as an abstract class. And now we can subclass from postable directly because that one subclasses from models.model for us. So in here, go postable. And here as well. quit out and I'm going to create some new migrations and then migrate. Now we can go back into the shell and then again import. So from main.models import book and post and we can just test it out by using book.objects or book.books.all Okay, so now we want to get a single instance of one book and I'm going to do that using book.books.get I'm specifying a title which I'm going to set equal to a new book and we have this book instance so I'm going to set it equal to a variable actually it's called my book and then we can try calling mybook.title and you will see that we still get a new book although we don't directly have the title on this model because we subclass from postable so this one will take care of adding it for us so of course this design pattern helps us to keep our code as dry as possible as we always try to do and one other added benefit is that as you can see you know class postable we instantly know what's going on with these fields because it's just obvious due to the name and that's just another added benefit anyways i hope you liked this episode if you did make sure to leave a like and a comment if you have any questions make sure to subscribe and stay up to date and i'll hope to see you inside of the next one cheers